Hey guys, Corey here. I'm going to mix it up on the channel for a bit and I'm going to go over a series of videos on React Native. The first video I'm going to do is a comparison between Pure React Native, Expo, and Expo Kit. As a developer, when you're starting out with React Native, you have to make a decision typically between whether you want to use Pure React Native or a thing called Expo or a hybrid between the two, which is called Expo Kit. The goal of this video is just to give you an overview of each one of these offerings and to go over a few uh, deep diagrams to kind of illustrate how each of them work and what each one offers. And then at the conclusion, I'm going to tell you which one I used and um, why I made that decision. So hopefully this will be enough to give you uh, enough information to make an educated decision on which one you want to use for whatever your requirements are. Uh, so first things first, let's just give a little high-level overview of which, what each one is. So Pure React Native. This is just your, this is what you start with when you initially do React Native. This is just your bare bones uh, product. It's, the main code is in JavaScript and there's support for native iOS and Android code. Uh, so not only can you write uh, basically React code, but you can also write your own native iOS and Android code. So you can pretty much do almost anything. In addition to writing your own code, you can also import in third-party modules that other people have written. One example, that a very popular example, is a gentleman wrote a module for background geolocation that you can uh, track a user's coordinates, whether the app is in the foreground, background, or even closed. Um, this is something that you can't typically do uh, without writing some sort of native code. Now, Expo is a bit different. It's You can think of it like training wheels uh, for React Native. Um, it's When you're actually programming in it, it's JavaScript-only code with all the native operations encapsulated away. Uh, Expo is a good, good target for traditional web developers because it, it encapsulates all of the really native um, operations away, which can be very complex, and there's a high learning curve with those. Uh, however, you don't have access to native modules, and you're not able to integrate in third-party native modules that other people have written. What you have to uh, do with any sort of native interaction with Expo is you have to use Expo's SDK that they've made for you. Uh, so any native operation um, Expo tries to create their own SDK that you can use. Uh, there's some downsides to this and I'll go over those in a second. Now there's a third offering called Expo Kit and this is really a hybrid between the two. Um, it's it essentially it's like pure React Native um, with access to Expo's SDK. Um, so you do have access to uh, write native code and integrate in uh, native modules um, and you can also have access to Espos SDK. So you would, you would think that this sounds like the best of both worlds. But there are some downsides to Expo Kit, and I'll go over, over those in a, in a little bit. Uh, so the pros for each. So for Pure React Native, uh, the big one is it has access to native modules. And, and this, this is huge. This is a huge thing. Um, you can just easily integrate in third-party modules that other people have built. Uh, which can really create a strong uh, performance and complex app. Uh, with Expo, everything is just easier. So it's easier to get started. It's easier to test directly on the, on the device, uh, which is really handy, especially if you're on Windows or Linux. Uh, you aren't able to test on iOS emulators. Uh, so if you have an iOS device like an iPhone, uh, you can just test directly on the device, which is really nice. It's also easier to set up some of the complex features, such as push notifications and, and geolocation. Um, push notifications are not trivial. They're very complex to set up. Uh, and Expo makes it very, very easy, which, which is nice. Expo Kit, it has access to the native modules, and it also has access to Expo SDK. So all the stuff that Expo built for some of these um, complex features like push notifications, uh, you have access to that SDK so you can still use it. Okay, so cons. Um, so with Pure React Native, you have to 
manage Android and iOS build configurations, which at times can be a real big pain in the rear. Uh, you have to learn Xcode, you have to learn the Android uh, folder structure and Gradle and all that stuff. Uh, and it is a big high learning curve, uh, but it can be worth it for some of the uh, third party modules that you can import and use. Expo, um, so the cons, there's no access to native modules, which can be a deal breaker for some requirements. Um, the app size is also very, very large because the Expo SDK is huge. And uh, for apps, it typically does have higher memory consumption just because of how Expo, Expo works and how their SDK is integrated into the app. Uh, with Expo Kit, um, and although it does have the best of both worlds with access to native modules and access to the Expo SDK, it is extremely buggy. Um, this is a very experimental setup. Um, there's horror stories that I've seen in Discord and Stack Overflow uh, you can really lead yourself down a rabbit hole with some very ambiguous errors that can really drive you crazy. Uh, it, it also is a large SDK size, so when people are downloading your app or trying to start it up, it, it'll, it'll take uh, quite a while. Um, okay, so a, a typical use case, at least this is my own opinion of uh, what you would use each one of these for. With Pure React Native, it, uh, uh, really strong use case is production level apps. There is, uh, I mean, th there's a lot of apps that are on the market today that use pure React Native, you know, such as Univision that has over 100,000 daily active users, uh, formerly Airbnb, um, but there's still other, even Facebook and Instagram have segments of their product that are running pure React Native. Expo, in my opinion, is only good for prototyping and educational purposes. So if you're a web developer that is trying to learn more about native and you want to make mobile apps, Expo is a good strong transition. It's it's uh, because you're only writing JavaScript code and you don't have to mess around with all the native operations. Uh, so it can give you a preview and if you know if you like it you could end up uh, moving to Pure React Native or Expo Kit. The last option is Expo Kit. I, in terms of use case, I would only recommend experimental setups, and the, re and the main reason being is just because it's so buggy that you're really gonna, have, it's really gonna be a huge pain in the rear uh, when you try to set it up. So I, I, I cannot recommend it for um, production level apps at this time. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into some diagrams. I think this will help conceptualize each one of these. Okay, so first one, we're gonna look at just pure React Native. And um, basically, as a developer, you have access to uh, JavaScript and Android code and iOS code. Uh, now, with JavaScript, um, most of your code is actually gonna be in JavaScript. And what happens is on compile time, it essentially takes this JavaScript and compiles them down to, um, along with the Android code and iOS code, into uh, individual native apps. Um, so Android will generate the APK and then iOS will generate the IPA um, that can then be published to the App Store. Um, the, so the one differentiator that I mentioned before is with, um, is, is with the native module support for Android and iOS. Um, so one example is um, there's a library called Reanimated. And uh, with this, you, this is a module that somebody else built. Uh, it's extremely powerful when it comes to advanced animations um, and it does require native uh, code. So um, if you're using pure React Native, you can just install this directly into both your native Android and iOS uh, repositories. Uh, if you're using Expo, you cannot. All right, so now let's move over to, um, to Expo. And I think this, this gives a really um, good visualization on essentially what Expo is. Um, so it, it's just like before in, in that there there is uh, JavaScript, Android, and iOS code, but you as a developer, you can only execute code in JavaScript, um, which is really handy if you're coming from web, uh, but it, unfortunately you're not able to do any um, custom or, or third-party modules for Android and iOS. 
Uh, instead, Expo provides a their own SDK, which I've illustrated here with this dotted box. Um, so if you want any sort of native function, you have to leverage Expo's SDK in order to get that operation. Um, so you know, for uh, for geolocation, Expo in their SDK they've created a uh, module that you can use. Uh, however, for example, this this um, geolocation module in the Expo SDK it only it only offers uh, geolocation when the app is in the foreground. It doesn't track location when the app is in the background or when the app is closed. Uh, however, there's you know if if you were not using Expo, you could just import a um, a native module that would track geolocation in the background. Um, so obviously there's some deficiencies with the Expo SDK in that realm. You just have less, flex, less flexibility um, as a developer. Um, similarly, you know, if I wanted to install the reanimated um, library, I could not do that with Expo SDK uh, or, or with, with the Expo setup. Um, so that's, that's unfortunate. Um, However, it, uh, Expo does simplify you know, a lot of the operations. Um, when you go to generate your, your apps for the App Store, uh, Expo also does that for you. So you don't have to manually uh, generate an APK and I IPA. Now, the last one is Expo Kit. So if we look at an illustration, it does look pretty similar to Pure React Native in that you can write JavaScript, Android, or iOS code. But you also have Expo you also have access to the Expo SDK. Uh, however, again, I said earlier that the Expo SDK uh, setup is extremely buggy. Um, and although this does look great, you're probably going to run into several uh, problems. And you know, there's additional memory consumption that, that occurs. And um, this creates a very large uh, bundle size. All right, so now to... Uh, um, to, to what I did, uh, I decided to go with pure React Native. Uh, I, I did initially go with Expo, but I eventually got to the point where I could not use it anymore. And uh, here are the three main, or I guess five main reasons why. Um, first of all, there's no, there's lack of support for background geolocation. Um, and I'm not the only one that's ejected from Expo uh, because of this. Um, there's a great article, which I'll link in the description, um, that was made by this guy named Daniel Kay. And he, he wrote a story of you know how I ditched Expo for Pure React Native. I think uh, there's a TLDR. Yeah, um, Pure React Native is not that scary after all. Uh, if your apps app needs are bigger than Expo can offer, don't be afraid to replace it completely with plain React Native. And that's exactly what I did. Um, Daniel goes throughout the article to um, explain you know exactly why he ended up leaving, um, but the main reason was due to the lack of uh, background geolocation. Um, I will link this article um, in my, in the description, so feel free to check it out. Uh, it, it's a pretty good pretty good article. Uh, okay, so another one is that there is no support for the payments API. Um, so if you actually go out to um, Expo's documentation. Uh, they have a page on payments and you know it does say Expo includes uh, support for payments uh, through Stripe and Apple Pay on iOS via Expo Kit so you cannot use just normal Expo uh, in order to integrate payments into your app you have to use uh, you would have to eject to the um, Expo Kit which I had mentioned before is extremely buggy um, so I decided not to do that with uh, with my configuration. Um, another reason that I, I personally experienced this and I couldn't figure out a way to fix it is that there's really slow image rendering. Um, there's not, at least in my, throughout my experience, there wasn't a good library, uh, at least in pure JavaScript, for, uh, for quick image rendering. Uh, with some of the native modules, such as um, I think I've got this one right here. This is called uh, React Native Fast Image. Um, this guy named Dylan Van, he wrote this library and essentially it caches things on the, um, basically on the native side. So it makes your images render very, very quickly. Uh, Expo, my own experience with it is just the images, it, it was really hard to cache it with uh, JavaScript only libra libraries. 
Um, so that was that was another deal breaker for me. Um, okay, so there's limited access to Firebase offerings as the as the fourth reason why I didn't use it. And let me just explain exactly um, what that is. Okay, so actually, let me just go into uh, I'll just go into the console. Okay, so it, for those of you who are familiar with Firebase, Firebase is a cloud vendor that's targeted towards. I guess it's a suite of products targeted towards uh, app developers, and uh, basically all these products with Expo, you would only be able to use the ones that support web because uh, Expo is, it gives you access to JavaScript, but not the native SDKs. So with web, you have access to, or I guess React Native Expo, you have access to the authentication, uh, database module, storage, and hosting. Uh, that's pretty much it. Oh, uh, sorry, no, you also have access to functions, my apologies. You don't have access to ML Kit. Uh, you don't have access to Crashlytics Performance Test Lab or any of these other advanced features um, except for maybe like one of the analytics uh, offerings. All these like gross stuff like predictions, A-B testing, cloud messaging, uh, in-app messaging, remote config, um, all these um, you don't have access to um, with, uh, with Expo. And, uh, and, and, that, and if you want to grow your app, you really need some of these like A-B testing and remote config stuff. Um, okay, the fifth reason is advanced animation support. Uh, so there is a, th there's a new library that was created um, by, I'm not sure what his real name is, but it's uh, K Magiria. He, read, he wrote a uh, library called Reanimated and this library is pretty awesome. It does some really advanced animations. Um, I don't think he has any examples here, uh, but, but, but this library is highly advanced. It uses a lot of the native modules uh, to really uh, do some high performance and highly complex animations that you just cannot do with JavaScript alone. Um, so that's, that was another deal breaker for me. And, and so that's it. That's the top five reasons of why I didn't use Expo. I think in conclusion, uh, what I think about React Native versus Expo, I think React Native is good for production applications, pure React Native. Expo is only good for prototyping or educational purposes. And Expo Kit is just too buggy at the time of this recording. In my opinion, if you can't use it for production, what's the point? Uh, there's no point to it. So I, I think the prototyping thing is, in, in my opinion, I think that's kind of a kick in the rear uh, to Expo. Um, but who knows? They're getting better every day. Uh, eventually, maybe they'll be production ready. But at the time of this recording, they are not. Uh, so again, this is all my opinion. And you know, feel free to take it with a grain of salt. Talk to you later. Bye.